Mm. Yeah, it's just it one of those days. Yeah, exactly. Physically, like, I don't know, I got so nervous on oh, the third yeah. set. I have no idea. And then all of a sudden I was down 5-1 and I was like, mm. might as well start playing now. Yeah. Came back so to 5-4 like, uh, and then tightened up again. <laughs> no, there's not too many other people using the racket or the People who are working all exclusively with this racket have never used a straight racket at all. Right. Uh, and how, how do you feel that the you know you had your adjustment period? What, what's what's the difference there? Would you have liked to have just come into this with this racket or now or looking well, back? How do you feel I about mean, that? I mean, I'm really I'm really glad that I came across it when I did because I, I still have had the ability to uh, to make the to make the transition, and I think part of that is when you've, when you've learned to play tennis the normal way, and then you are able to transition, it really makes you pay attention to what the differences are. Uh -huh. And so I've been able to learn, it's, it's taken me longer, obviously, but I've been able to learn kind of what the differences are, what, what helps a person kind of adapt from one racket to the other, and, uh, and going along with that, when I, when I watch someone who's playing with it for the first time, a total beginner who's never used any other type of racket, it does. It makes me appreciate. Wow, it, you know, if if I were if I were had to have learned this first, you know, I think I would be so much farther along because because they don't know any different. They pick it up and they're if, to them it's completely natural. That's one of the reasons it was named the natural because if we we, we hand it to little kids, you know, miniature like two-handled rackets, and they just grab it with two hands both sides and they make you know great contact with ball. I've spent the last year teaching and, and I have more success you know with the kids actually making solid contact with the ball with this than any other racket because when they have a single hand racket a lot of times they're swatting at it like this they change their hands like this it's they can't control a big head so they have to grab with two hands anyway so this kind of just helps them turn their shoulders keep everything really compact and if nothing else it works well like as a training tool are the two handles then different shapes or, I mean, structure? Uh, uh, no, these these are the same uh, length and shape. Um, it's just the, uh, the way you can grab it with each hand. Is right, it? and I usually, I mean, I try to keep, you know, me and my left hand side and yeah. the right hand on this, just like, uh, you don't have to, but I just like to, to know kind of which hand is doing what. what yeah, because it's, it's a feel. Right? In terms of the, the standard grips of a single-handed racket it seems like that doesn't really apply here does well, it, as it does much? actually I mean I, I still use like like a traditional like a forehand grip like semi-western grip and you know for let's, a, let's, let's look at that yeah so. maybe it's a little closer to Western but like it's the same type of grip you would teach on a single hand racket and you know to develop top spin you get a lot of more under the racket and then when I'm hitting the backhand I actually have a backhand like top so you, spin you grip. switch while you're I do in motion and then the volley grips are the same I use continental Oh. The only difference is for the serve, I use this handle, you can tell, the front handle, and then I flip it around like that. Oh, so that... the advantage of the angle is actually coming down into the court. At a certain point, then, it becomes just an extension of your arm, and right. you don't think about it that much. Exactly. Um, you don't do hybrid stringing, you just do right, you, right just normal Solinko polyester string. I'm really happy with it. And you, you haven't messed around with the stringing then? It's just I've done, yeah, I've, I've tried pretty much everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah. ah, but you come but back to this. I huh? like I like this the most. I really like how the these new um, uh, high grade like polyester strings, they don't move at all. You know, you get really good. Are uh, they are they round on a cross section or are they I think ribbed? This might be a hexagonal. Yeah. Hexagon shape. So they even got a little grip there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a really good string. Well. I ask you about the getting adjusted to ground strokes, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you can explain that and and kind of show show it as well because it appears that what happens is you're really going in uh, holding both at the same time, right, right. and deciding in the last second pretty much whether you're doing a, a two hand if it's got if it's hanging there and you can just pound it or right right but go ahead and I mean yeah sure the basic uh, concept is like I start with two hands on the racket like this and if it comes to my left side I'll go I'll put a strong backhand grip and I'll keep my forehand grip on the back 
I'll either hit it two hands on this side, or the idea is if I get pulled stretched wide, I can let go and hit a left hand single hand shot. I can also let go with this shot and hit a back, backhand slice. And the same goes for the other side. I can, I'll start with the two hands. If it's in my reach, I'll hit it with two hands like this. Or if I have to get stretched, I'll hit a single hand forehand. And also on some balls where it's, you know, the ball's just sitting up and it, it's Hang advantageous, yeah, to have more racket head speed, I'll use a one hand you shot. You hit the as home well. run. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the idea. I'm, I'm a natural right-hander, so I do that a little more often, the single hand on the right-hand side. But my goal is to one day be able to do the left-hand side equally well, the single hand forehand. The trickiest part of what you do is that, is that ball toss, racket toss. Because uh -huh. yeah. that's, I mean, nobody tosses a racket in mid-serve. How, yeah. how much, it, I would just think, they're looking at it, that that's the yeah, that, part that's hardest to do. Yeah, you know, that part actually did, came along just um, as a gradual process because, like I told you, I started doing the jump serve with a normal racket, so I would just switch it from one hand to another. Like, just with a normal racket, you can imagine, I just switched it like that. Yeah. And then when I started using this, I held it like this and then switched to this handle. But then what happened was, I, I was hitting the serve like this, but I realized there was an advantage to hitting like this, oh, and then I just started flipping in my hand like oh, that. Oh, so it really had to, more to do with just how, how to get a good a, a hit on the ball. Right, yeah. and, and the other thing is, like, there's an advantage to, like, hitting with the front, you know, the back handle on certain shots, yeah. and then the front handle on other ones, so it's, it's advantageous to get used to this flip. So I think oh. I was just doing this all the time, and just... I don't know if you're kissing huh. this on camera, but it's just sort like, of, yeah. But it, yeah, it's just we call it the flip shot because, huh. in the same way that there's an av advantage like serving with this handle, like if I get stretched on the reach, like you can see, this would be a forehand. But yes. if I'm running for a ball, I can flip it this way, and then I can take the ball oh, and go behind further. me. Oh. Yeah, so you, you gain quite a bit of reach just with the angle being inverted. Uh, you. Oh. So you you have an ambidextrous normal serve. Right, right, exactly. And I've, I've worked on the left-hand jump serve as well. It's almost there. It's not quite uh, to the point where I'm com confident enough to use it in competition, but I, I use it sometimes in, in matches where maybe it's, there's not quite as much pressure. It's so complex, though, I mean, because you've got uh, the timing. You're, the ball is, what, 20-something feet in here? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's yeah, up there. It's almost as high it. as the lights. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and so that's giving you uh, quite a few seconds. How much of your volleyball experience le led to this? I mean, do you think you would have ever come up with it otherwise? Well, it's funny. I, I actually never played volleyball competitively. Huh, okay. I played many other sports, uh, basketball primarily, but also other sports. And uh, the idea for the serve just came. I was on the tennis court just experimenting, and I was trying to get more elevation on my serve, more forward momentum. And uh, I mean, having watched volleyball, I grew up in Southern California, and I've, you know, I've obviously played for fun on the beach and so forth. So, I, uh, I just started mimicking that type of motion, where I would actually toss it with the same hand, just like I would do in volleyball, and uh, just swing my arms, jump up as high as I possibly could, and and hit it like an overhead, essentially like volleyball players hit a jump serve, like they're hitting a spike, right? They're just yes. tossing up and kind of spiking it. Well, that's kind of how I feel. Is, if I can get the ball high enough, I can kind of hit and hit down on it, like an overhead, and hit different angles in the box. When did you feel, because this wasn't something that you just easily jumped into, I, when did you feel that you had the perfect, that, that came with proficiency, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. And I, I had, I think I had the freedom to do it because I, I didn't really take a conventional path with tennis. I, I didn't start playing like full time until I was 18 or 19. Ah, okay. I wanted, I decided I want to try to play professionally. So I had a few years there where I was playing some tournaments, but I was also developing my game, and uh, I, I had the yeah ability to take yet. a few months at a time yeah. to say, hey, I'm going to work on this, and that's kind of when I started. It was, it was over 10 years ago. I was just, it was, I had a normal racket, and I was just tossing the ball up and jumping and trying to you know get the timing down I would say before I, I could really use it confidently in a match it was two or three months and then gradually I started using it and uh, the reason I stuck with it is because I I simply 
win more points using that serve. Like sometimes I'll go through matches where I'll try to do normal serves to conserve a little energy or maybe if it's super windy. But I, it's not as effective as my, my jump serve, so I continue to do that as much as possible. You were doing the jump serve almost exclusively in this match, right. but earlier on in your earlier matches, you were mixing it up a lot. Yeah, a lot of it depends. I mean, certain days to this week, I was playing like four matches a day, so it does, you know, I, I have to have, you know, a good strength in my legs to be able to go up over and over. But in doubles, usually it's not an issue. If people want to find out more about it, go to the website, naturaltennis.com. Naturaltennis.com, right. It seems like it does take a lot of feedback in terms of if you're innovating like this, because it's not just one thing you're coming up with that's new, it's two things, and that's why uh -huh. people were out here really talking about this all weekend, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> is this going to change anything? Yeah, it's definitely different. <laughs> but you, you don't seem to be like, a, a, you know, you're just taking it easy, it seems like. It's, it's, you're, it's a natural progression, it's not something that you're... You don't have high goals for it or anything like that. Well, I'm just, yeah, I'm really, I just, I mean, I really love, um, love the game of tennis. This has made it even more fun for me, just the, the process of kind of uh, developing new shots, the creativity of it. And uh, I think it's, for me, anyway, like when I used to play, like, right-hand dominant all the time, I had one backhand for a while, like, there's an imbalance to it sometimes, you know, your shoulder gets tired or whatever. In this, I can just all start playing left-handed if I want, you know, it's like a, it's a so bilateral, you, you know, it's, it's more like exercise and you go to the gym, you know, you wouldn't just like do Work one, on one side, side the whole time, you just kind of do everything equally. So that's And you can actually see a lot of the pro players uh, that, you know, that, their dominant side, their arms, their serving right. arm is different. Exactly. The serving yeah. is different. A lot of times they're tilted, they're back yeah. one way or another because they've been putting so much stress on, on one side. So I think from a pure health standpoint, it makes a lot of sense just to, you know, train both sides of the body. And someday you'll know enough to be able to coach it. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate the time. Well, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, thank this you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.